Good evening. Welcome to St. Anne's. My name is Scott Killebrew. We're pleased that you have chosen to worship with us. Today we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we are challenged to Here we go. Here. change our lives so that we might be more present to God calling us. Let us now prepare ourselves by opening our hearts and listening to his word. Our mass intention is for Estella Garrigo. Our celebrant is Father Ray, assisted by Deacon Nick. Please silence your cell phone, and I invite you to stand and greet those around you. before the Lord this night, gathered in love and in hope and in faith in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the great communion promises a gift of the Holy Spirit rest always with you. With your God's mercy calls us to repentance. When we judge others for their behavior, no matter how unsavory it is, we need also to remember that God's mercy is not just available to us, it is there for all his people. <coughs> Surprising things happened to Zacchaeus, the malign tax collector who looked for Jesus in his life. God's mercy is so much greater than ours. As we begin then, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you invite us to follow you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call sinners to yourself. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God, in great love then, forgive all of our sins this night fill us with the spirit of peace and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray now, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who lives now and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all because you can do all things. And you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are and loathe nothing you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it? Or he preserved, had it, and had been called forth by you. But you space all things because they are yours. O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore you rebuke offenders little by little. Warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their weaknesses and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you 
that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed, either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was but he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I, may, I must stay in your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man who is a descendant of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek, and he shall, and he shall save what was lost. The Gospel of our Lord. I like the story about Zacchaeus, and I can think about the sycamore tree. It kind of comes home to me because um, in the first house that we owned, the front yard was kind of bare, and so I found in the basin of the Los Angeles River, which isn't much of a river anyhow, it has a lot of weeds growing, I found a little sycamore tree, and it was about that high. And so I dug a hole right in the middle of the front yard, and I buried it, and I set it in there. Now, we lived there about another year. The tree grew to be about that tall. Um, moved to another house where we lived for 
of less than, less than nine months and then moved to New York. When we first came back on a visit, uh, five years later, the tree was that big around and about 25 feet tall. When they take off, they take off. Now this wasn't exactly the same kind of sycamore that Zacchaeus was in because his would have had more branches down lower and things that he could climb on. But think about Jesus or think about anybody looking at what's happening with Zacchaeus. Here is a man, a rich man, so he was dressed in fine purple clothes, I'll bet, uh, silk, and here he climbs a tree. And he's up in this tree, kind of hiding in the branches, just so he can see Jesus. And when Jesus comes along, he sees him and says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house tonight. Uh, and he wasn't coming for Taco Tuesday. <laughs> he was coming to his house because Zacchaeus uh, needed Jesus to be there. And, and so in in meeting with Zacchaeus and in staying at his house, even though there were so many critical things going on outside, Zacchaeus came to believe. And Jesus said, this man is a son of Abraham. He was a Jew, even though he was a tax collector and he was collecting taxes. And, and you know, he said, I'm going to return it. But my bet is for a man who is the chief tax collector, chief tax collector, dressed in fine clothes, would have, uh, have made a little extra money on the taxes. He didn't have, they didn't get paid very much. But still, he was a rich man. But he said, I'll give it all back. Now, if we look back to the first reading, the Book of Wisdom, and, and I do recommend to you the Book of Wisdom. It was written... Uh, about 300 years ago before Jesus came. And it was, uh, it's just a beautiful book, a beautiful thing to read. And I encourage you to do it someplace very, very quiet and sometimes where, sometime where you have a time to be prayerful and you uh, uh, can sit there and enjoy it. In the book of Wisdom, uh, Wisdom, the, the writer says, uh, God didn't make things that he didn't like. Whatever God made, he loved. And that was really the whole point of, the, of that part of the book of wisdom, wisdom, is that God loves what he makes. And he, if there was something that he didn't like, he wouldn't have made it. So think about that, how it applies to you and me. Because if God did not love us, he wouldn't have made us. And that's really quite a refreshing thing to think about. Uh, and maybe that's the, the thing you can take from this homily is, if God didn't love me, he wouldn't have made me. So this applies to Zacchaeus. God loved him. Even though he was, he was not a bad person, he just did bad things. And Jesus came and forgave him those things so that he could go on with his life and be faithful, uh, faithful to, to Jesus and also be faithful to the people that he was serving. You know, he had to be faithful to the Romans, but he still needed to be faithful to the Jews. And so we're kind of set on that path sometimes too, where what we do for a living is something that, that makes, us, um, makes us wish that we were doing something that were maybe a little more positive. Now, I don't know if that, that that's the case with you. It certainly wasn't the case with me, but uh, I guess there was a time in some of my jobs where I didn't think that, that, uh, uh, that they were appreciating what was being done and that they didn't really have the belief in God that, that I hoped they'd had and make their business that way. At any rate, God made us because he loved us. He didn't make us because we're bad. Even though sometimes we do some bad things, but God, Jesus says, I came to forgive those things. 
That was the reason he came. So believe the, the reading from, from wisdom. Uh, believe the story about Zacchaeus, how God came, Jesus came to Zacchaeus. He went to his house. Uh, he sat with him at a meal uh, and, and forgave him. So tonight we're going to have another meal. And think about that as you come up for the Eucharist. And in that meal, know that God forgives us for the things that we do, the things we think about, and the things we don't do. Amen? Amen. praise of our merciful God, let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father. Hear our prayer. For the church, that she may always seek and be the model of reconciliation and restoration that is a true response to God's limitless love, we pray. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world and care for all God's creation, we pray for those suffering, particularly in Ukraine, Myanmar and Mozambique, we pray. For all citizens of the United States, that our participation in the upcoming election may lead to a world of greater justice and peace, we pray. For our parish community, that we may climb to new heights in our quest for God, we pray. For all those struggling with mental and physical issues, especially those people who have asked for our prayers, Doug Burns, Susan Carey, Jean Crosby, Art De Cesario, Flor De Rallo, Cindy Dennett, Bill Downs, Danny Dunn, Pat Farrell, Joseph Felicio, Lynn Marfil, Esparnaza Garrett, Jane Gubelman, Elaine Johnson, Rusty Medlin, Jonathan Moody, Nick Nicolosi, Jim Smith, Bruce Tagg, Einar Tano, Joseph Villani, we pray. 
For all who have died, that they may join the heavenly banquet in the household of God, particularly Virginia Bonner, mother of Kathy Caston, Joan Groner, mother of Cheryl Flickinger, Vernon Lawson, cousin of Carolyn Rack. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of this Mass, Estella Garrigo, we pray. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Continuing as of also at Parish to seek Our Lady's intercession for our community and our needs, we pray together, Our Lady of La Salette, Reconciler of Sinners. Pray without ceasing for us who have recourse to you. O oh God of mercy and tenderness, listen to the voices of your people who cry out to you on behalf of those in need. For we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This weekend's second collection is for our Own Life Teen program here at St. Anne's.
Pray with me now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to our almighty and loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord our God, on the offerings we make now to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. We ask this as we offer ourselves more faithfully to the service of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one loving God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you our thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus, our Savior. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. So now with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy so look we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them now the power of your Holy Spirit so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your beloved Son our Lord Jesus the Christ in whom we too are your daughters and sons Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself by his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Once again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the whole human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and of heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Archbishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Our Lady of La Salette, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Anne, and all the saints, and with our deceased sisters and brothers, whom we humbly commend to your divine mercy. For then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Grace become missionaries of God's mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Peace I leave you, my peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins now, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant the peace, unity, and hope of your kingdom. Will you live, reign, and love us forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen and living Lord rest always with you. And with your spirit. And let us share with one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
to invite our Eucharistic ministers to the sick to come forward. My sisters in Christ, the ill and infirm members of our community await the mercy of the Lord. So we send you to them with word and sacrament that they may be reminded of God's saving deeds in the past and refreshed by the precious body of Christ, which you bring them, who is our consolation in the present and our hope of future glory. Go then in peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Just a couple of announcements. Um, this is the last week that Adopt-A-Family flyers will be in the pews. I know you've got them in the pews, the red and the green flyers we put out every year. For your generous contributions to the wonderful Adopt-A-Family program uh, that comes up during the Advent season. So if you haven't picked one up yet, please take one and prayerfully discern how you can be a part of this special giving event of our parish community every year, Adopt-A-Family. Um, also, you'll find out at the um, in front of the narthex, there'll be a table with our representative from the pro-life uh, ministry who will be giving out some books, uh, some very beautiful books written by a parishioner of ours a number of years ago, Amy Pedersen, who uh, wrote a special book on the life, uh, the, the life in the womb of a child. And it's a beautiful gift there for free. Um, and you can take one and especially um, and during this Respect Life Month, pray especially for the life of the preborn. Also, I have um, a special invitation I want to give to you now, and we're going to do that by video. And I'd like you to take this invitation to heart and come to this very beautiful event that's going to happen a couple of Sundays from now. Dear sisters and brothers, the Catholic Church of St. Anne is a parish that is rich in time, talent, and treasure. Whether advocating for the voiceless, supporting the underprivileged, or serving the community, you step up and minister when called on. Now that we're emerging from COVID's cloud, our 70 plus ministries are back at it. Volunteers are doing the Lord's work by putting their faith into action. These efforts are the lifeblood of our church and enable us to live out St. Anne's mission to bring God's reconciling love into the world. And whether you've been a volunteer for years or you're a new parishioner, I encourage you to come and find your place in the ministry life of our parish family. Now to help you to do this, we're hosting a special event, the Ministry Showcase, where you can explore and discern how you can express your faith. During this event, you will have the chance to connect with fellow parishioners, review their ministry's mission, and find opportunities to support, serve, and advocate. Our life in the service of Jesus and his mission is beautifully varied. We offer vibrant worship, form disciples, nourish our community, and bring help, hope, and healing to Christ's needy sisters and brothers. Where is God calling you to share your faith? Journey with us to find your place. Come to the Ministry Showcase and answer Jesus' call to follow Him. See, it's not about ministry only, it's about eating. <laughs> <laughs> Seem to eat.
he did so many wonderful <laughs> gatherings of life. Yeah. It's a Catholic fest. I think we it's do It's a that. Catholic <laughs> fest. Yeah. Um, please join me then in a final prayer of thanksgiving. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. We make our prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who lives now and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the God of mercy and peace forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And in God's great love, may we continue then to find our blessing, grace, courage, and peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Stop.